Just last week, a team of volunteers and law enforcement from several agencies helped get results in a four-day search for a Flagler County teen who suffers from muscular dystrophy. Perhaps the most memorable hero in that search party right here, a canine bloodhound named Putnam from the Putnam County Sheriff's Office. Yeah, he was the hound who found Ricky Wheeler. You can hear him in studio right <laughs> now. So we are so excited to have Putnam with us here today along with his canine handler, Sergeant Emmett Merritt. What is that little sound Putnam's making right now? Is he working? That's his whining sound. He's he's wanting to go. He wants, yeah. because I read something, like he, like bloodhounds in general, they are bored if they can't work and they, get to, they can be destructive if they're not kept busy. Absolutely, people, um, have the, I guess, false illusion that bloodhounds lay on the porch in front of the fireplace and are all lazy. Yes, absolutely not, not. not the case. A absolutely not. If you don't keep them active or doing something, they'll tear stuff up. Um, they'll get into things. They're just very... Yeah, yeah. And you've been here for a while now, but you didn't bring him in because he would just want to work. He would just want to keep... He'll just whine and start to pull and want to smell everything. Wow. And he was incredibly important in this search. Yes, ma'am. How, how helpful was he? Um... Basically, they had been looking for Ricky for about four days, yeah. and naturally, um, being a bloodhound handler, um, my wife also works a bloodhound in the next county over, but we always watch the news and we're always looking to see what's going on, so we were trying to follow it, but um, they had went over there one dog, I think on Sunday, but um, to give him credit, he tried to start from the house three days later. Mm. Um, the day that we went over there, uh, we had sent one of our lieutenants, Lieutenant Taylor, over there with our drone unit mm -hmm. and a couple other guys to help with the ground search. Well, during that search, they found some clothing in a wood line, which was probably the best thing that we could do. So we actually had a starting spot. So basically, they, uh, my lieutenant called me and said, hey, they want you to come over here with Putnam. Uh, what do you need? And I said, basically, I need you just to have them secure the scene, back everybody out, because they had hundreds of volunteers, yeah. back everybody out, lock the area down so that um, we could come in there and, and actually do the search. Yeah, and you're talking about finding the scent, one of the best things they can do. And, you know, we, t we see their little, their long ears, but that actually helps them get that scent and keep it up there, right? Is there on the ground? Is that How does that work? Yes, ma'am. He, he probably won't put his head down, but when he actually puts his head down with these big old ears, mm -hmm. he puts his nose down. They're like below his nose, so when he has his head down, those ears go That's down. That's all he can and smell. It funnel, and it funnels the scent <sighs> up into his nose. That's just amazing. So how is it working? You know, I, I work with people who can talk back. Um, sometimes that doesn't work out so well. How is it working with Putnam? It's great. Um, like I said, I've been working bloodhounds for about 18 years, and I've worked patrol dogs too, so I used to carry both for most of my career. Um, I just love the bloodhounds because it's missing. It's for missing kids, yeah. Alzheimer's. Um, it's just that's their single job is to track where you have patrol dogs they they track but they do dr narcotic searches they got to do building searches they got to do area searches they got to do article searches so they have so many jobs to do so he has one job and he's He's good. And he's excellent <laughs> at it, yeah, as we saw last week. And, you know, I was doing just a little bit of reading on, on these, these, they're beautiful, and I didn't realize he's as big as he is. But, I mean, he, <laughs> sorry, Putnam, no one likes to talk about their weight, right? But, you know, we think they get the name Bloodhound because of the scent, but it's because of the bloodlines, which makes them so good at their job. Yes, ma'am. He's a, you know, fully registered Bloodhound, um, AKC. Yeah. What is it like when you actually know that Putnam and you are a part of helping to reunite someone who's been lost, find their loved ones? It's awesome. Um, it, what, what, I, I'm fortunate because I have an administration, the sheriff, the undersheriff, um, and my commanders support our program 100%. So if any other county surrounding us, no matter if it's Flagler, Clay, Marion, St. John's, even though they have bloodhounds, mm -hmm. um, if I get called, they have no problem. Go, go help them. Yeah. How many working years does he have? Um, he has about four, three and a half, four with, yeah. with Putnam County Sheriff's Because then what happens after that? He's going to retire and live with me. Oh, is he going to be with you, really? <laughs> so how many he, years does he have left then? Um, I gauge it by if they start slowing down. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's a pretty good-sized dog, so he hasn't worked his whole career because I had him since he was a pup. And, yeah. Um, so once we got him working, so he may work another year, maybe two. Um, he'll be like nine, I'd say eight or nine. So what do you do then? He's ready to go. He is ready no. to work. So what happens after he retires? How do you keep him happy? 
we, he's kind of young. We still take him out, and we still let him do training tracks. You know, mm -hmm. Like I said, fortunate, my wife said canine handler, too, so yeah. we love doing it. So we'll take him to the park, and we'll just do tracks, or we'll play games. We'll just, like, walk out of the house and call and say, hey, come find me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So he's they, they are famous for their slobber. How do you deal with that? He's he's not bad. He's not bad as most. Um, he's kind of a – he slobbers a little bit, but there's some that you'll see hanging to the floor. Yeah. So, and it's a lot, a lot of cleaning at home. Oh, I know. I bet. I bet. That's but, called character. You know? A little eclectic. That's not going to work on a dating profile. Yeah. He likes to slobber. No, that's not going to work. Yeah. So he's, you've got treats for him. And, like, when he does a good job, which is what he's trained to do. Do you give him something special? Because, I mean, he, when he found Ricky, everyone's like, oh, my God, Putnam's going to get treats for days. But he probably really can't just get anything because he's an athlete, too. Well, he got steak that night because I had oh. steak. Well. So, I had some, so he got some. The other, do the other dogs were mad, but he got, he got a little. But he gets, uh, like, training. He loves, we give him liver treats. Yeah. So he knows when we, anytime we're training um, or when they get back to the car, mm -hmm. on a real deployment back to the car, he yeah. gets his treat. But yeah. in all training, um, the decoy will always have somebody at the end, and when they when he comes up to him, we kind of train him to ID him by kind of jumping up on him. Yeah. Um, you don't really want to do that to sometimes, you know, older, you know, if you get all timers sure. or kids, you got to mm -hmm. make sure. But but in training, they always learn to jump up, and then you give them their treats, and he digs for it out of your hand just to make it a game. Look at him. He wants your attention Kelsey. right now. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Putnam. Such a pleasure. Boy, good boy. Oh, thank you guys for being here. You're we welcome. Really appreciate it.